Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So I am back today with my first spring sewing project and I'm really excited about this video because I really love the result of this project. So what I'm making today is this ruffle collared satin polka dotted blouse and I'm so happy with how this turned out in the end, but it was definitely a journey to get there. This was not a project that went easily for me. It was one where I had to redo some different things several times. The collar took me several hours because I unpicked it and re sewed it I think three or four times. So it was definitely challenging and most of that was due to this fabric. I don't think that this pattern is a difficult one overall, but the fabric was so slippery that it definitely caused me some difficulties as I was sewing it. But I'm really glad that I kept going and finished the project. So let me show you what pattern I used for this. For this project, I used McCall's number 8180, and it's this really cute collar blouse pattern. And what I liked about this pattern in particular, as opposed to some different patterns that I had seen, was that it is a basic button front shirt without any kind of frilly sleeves on view C, which I made. And I liked that simple contrast with the more dramatic collar. And I felt like that would work really well for my polka dotted fabric. So I used view C just as it is in the pattern. And then my fabric is this beautiful, viscose satin that is from Mood Fabrics. This is by the designer Zimmerman. And I also used these adorable little heart-shaped buttons that I found from Joanne Fabrics. So I really love the result even though it was a challenging process. So let me go ahead and jump in and show you how I made this shirt. So to get started with this project, I'm just going to start by cutting out all of my pattern pieces. I purchased one and a half yards of my fabric and I was able to get all of the pattern pieces out of that yardage, which I was really happy about because this fabric was a little bit more on the pricey side, but it did take a little bit of puzzling together and I did rearrange the pattern pieces a few times, but was able to fit them all. So I'm just going to cut them all out here. Here is a quick inventory of all of the pattern pieces that I will be using for this project. So I have the shirt front, the shirt back, the facing, there are two facing pieces, the sleeve, the sleeve cuff, then the collar and the ruffle. So the first step to sewing this shirt is to sew the darts on the shirt front pieces. And if you're unfamiliar with darts, they are just little triangle folds in the fabric that are stitched together to give the garment a more three-dimensional shape and improve the fit. So what I'm going to do here is fold the dart together by matching up the notches that mark the ends of the dart and then folding this tapering towards the end of the dart, which I have marked with a straight pin. I just find that to be the easiest way to do this. And then I'll just stitch this down using a straight stitch. Sometimes darts can lead to puckers on the front of the fabric. So a way to prevent that is to just backstitch at the beginning of the dart. And as you get to the end of the dart, just sew straight off of the fabric without backstitching. Then just cut your thread long and knot it together and that will prevent the dart from puckering on the right side of the garment.
And then once both of my darts are sewn, I'm just going to press these flat towards the hem of the shirt. And here you can see the dart looks really smooth and we don't have any puckers on the outside. So moving on next to the shoulder seams, here you'll start to see that I was really struggling with my fabric throughout this entire project because it is so slippery. So even here, when I laid it down on my ironing board, it just fell off. So I was really struggling with the fabric throughout the whole project, but I really just tried to take my time and redo things when necessary. So to sew the shoulder seams today, I'm going to use something called a French seam because I don't want to use the serger today and I want to use some different seam finishes. So to do this, I'm going to start by pinning my shoulder edges together with the wrong sides together instead of the right sides together. So it's very counterintuitive. And then I will sew it with a one quarter inch seam allowance on the right side of the fabric. So that's about half of a normal seam allowance. Then after I've stitched those together, I'll trim the top of the seam allowance away and then I will press this flat. With that seam allowance pressed flat, I'm going to fold the fabric now along that seam line so that the right sides are now together and pin along this seam line that we just created. And the great thing about a French seam is it completely encases your seam inside your stitching so that nothing shows on the inside. It's such a clean, beautiful finish for a seam. So now I'm just going to stitch this with a one quarter of an inch seam allowance and repeat the same thing on the other side. here is how that seam looks from the inside. You can see it looks so clean and tidy and it's a great alternative to a serger for straight seams. So now I'm going to move on to making the ruffle for the collar. So I'm going to take the two ruffle pieces and pin these together with the right sides together along the short edge that is not curved and just sew this down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Next, I'm going to press the seam open instead of to the side. This will just reduce the bulk since this is going to be gathered into a ruffle and it will keep this feeling a little bit lighter here at the center seam. Then I'm just going to fold the ruffle piece in half with the wrong sides together and press this down so that it becomes one nice long piece. And this fabric really almost felt like satin ribbon once I pressed it down. It really holds its shape nicely. So now with my stitch length on the longest setting, I'm going to run some gathering stitches along the top of the ruffle. And I originally put in two rows of gathering stitches like I normally would, but I ended up redoing the collar a few times because I wasn't 100% happy with it. And one thing that I found with this fabric is that it actually worked better with just one row of gathering stitches. So starting with one of the collar pieces, I'm going to turn this so that the wrong side is facing up. And I've gone ahead and cut a piece of a fusible interfacing that is cut from the same pattern piece. And I'm going to go ahead and use my iron to attach this to the collar to give it a little bit more body and structure. So now I'm ready to add the ruffle to the collar. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just pull up my gathering stitches and adjust the ruffle so that it will fit along the edge of the collar. Then I could go ahead and pin the ruffle to the collar with the gathered edge facing the edge of the collar and the other edge facing up towards the neckline. Next, I took the collar over to the sewing machine and just sewed the ruffle on using basting stitches to hold it in place while I attach the other side of the collar. Mm -hmm. 
and with the ruffle basted on, I could go ahead and add the other half of the collar. So I'm just going to pin this on with the right sides together, sandwiching that ruffle between the two collar pieces. And then I'll just sew all the way around that outside edge. Now for this process, I really went slow with my sewing and took as much time as I felt I needed to, to make sure that I wasn't catching the ruffle in the seam or anything like that. So I'd really recommend taking your time with that process. To reduce the bulk, I went ahead and trimmed away the seam allowance, making sure I'm not cutting the stitching here. And then I could turn the collar towards the outside and give it a good press. And here is how it looks. So now I'm going to go ahead and move on and attach the collar to the shirt. So I'm just going to match this along the neck edge according to the markings that were on the pattern piece and pin this in place and then take it over to my sewing machine and baste it down. Now you may have noticed that the neck edge is still raw here, so we need to finish off that neck edge. And to do that, we're going to use a neck facing. So I'm going to take the facing pieces and attach them at the shoulder seam. So I'll place them with the right sides together, pin this down and sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And while I'm at my sewing machine, I'm going to go ahead and run some zigzag stitches all the way around the outer edge of the facing. This is a great way to finish the edge if you have a raw edge and you don't have a serger. So I've just set my zigzag stitch to be really close together to give me the most coverage of that edge possible. And I think it looks really nice and neat. Here is how that looked once I was done. So now we're ready to attach the facing to the shirt. And so to do this, I'm going to take my facing and place it with the right side toward the right side of the shirt. I like to start at the front corners at the top neck edge. I just find that the easiest place to start with pinning a facing down. And I'm going to pin this all the way around the neck edge, sandwiching the collar between the shirt and the facing. Then also all the way around using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And while I'm at my sewing machine, I'm going to go ahead and trim away any excess from the seam allowance. And then I'm going to do a little bit of understitching here on the front pieces and the neckline. Understitching is a really great technique when you are sewing any kind of lining or facing. It just involves using a straight stitch to sew over the facing or the lining, but catching the seam allowance underneath. And that will allow your facing or your lining to turn towards the inside and not stick out the edges of your garment. And it gives it a lot more of a clean look. And then one final detail to secure the facing I'm just going to run a row of top stitching down either side of the front pieces and this is at a one and one quarter inch seam allowance so I gave the facing a good press and here is how the shirt is looking and now I can move on to the side seams so I'm going to use French seams once again to sew my side seams so just pinning them together first with the wrong sides together and sewing with that one quarter of an inch seam allowance then trimming away the excess and turning it to the other side and sewing again with another one quarter seam allowance. So now we're ready to move on to making the sleeves. And the first step to make these sleeves is to sew this very short hem on the front of the sleeve pieces. And this is marked on the pattern piece. So you'll just fold this little segment of fabric up two times about a quarter of an inch and top stitch it down. This will give a gap in the sleeve cuff for your hand to fit in before you button it. Next, we're going to sew the sleeve side seams, and I'm once again going to sew these using a French seam, just pinning them together along the side of the sleeve. Mm -hmm. 
And while I'm at the sewing machine, I'm going to go ahead and run two rows of gathering stitches along at the bottom of the sleeve. So the next step is to work with the cuff piece. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply fusible interfacing to the cuff because we want this to have a little bit of structure and body. So I'm going to just press that on to the back of the cuff piece. Next, I'm going to fold under one edge of this cuff piece, 5 eighths of an inch and press it down just like I was going to sew a hem. So to attach the cuff to the sleeve, the first thing I want to do is pull my gathering threads and gather up the bottom of the sleeve just a little bit. Then I will take my cuff piece and place it with the right sides together against the sleeve, matching up the raw edge that we did not fold under to the raw edge of the sleeve. Then I'm just going to pin this all the way around and adjust the gathers of the sleeve to fit the cuff. Next, I'm just going to sew the cuff to the sleeve using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And just a couple more steps to go to finish off the cuff. We are going to fold it back on itself so that the right sides are together and pin this along at the edges. Then I'll sew these edges down using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then turning the cuff right side out, I'm just going to pin along the edge where the cuff is joined to the shirt, and then I'm going to top stitch all the way around the cuff on all four sides. So now we're ready to attach the sleeves to the shirt. So I'm going to start by placing my shirt with the right side down just so I can kind of see what I'm working with. This sleeve does not have any ease stitching put in, so it's just set directly into the armhole, which can be a little bit tricky. So I really recommend taking your time with this because it can be kind of difficult to do. So I used a lot of pins here and just made sure to sew really slowly. So with the right sides together, I'm going to match up the side seam of the sleeve with the side seam of the shirt and pin all the way around the armhole, adjusting to make sure that everything is fitting into place really nicely. Then also all the way around the armhole, setting the sleeve into place using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I'll trim away the excess fabric and go back with my zigzag stitch to finish off the edge. So just a couple more steps to go. I've gone ahead and marked the positioning for my buttonholes on this shirt. So there will be six down the front as well as one on each cuff. The shirt is designed for two buttons on the cuffs, but I only had enough for one on each. So I just decided to go with one button there. So once I sewed my buttonholes, I went ahead and opened those out using some small scissors. I either use these or I use a seam ripper to open out my buttonholes. But since this fabric was a little bit more delicate, I went with the scissors. And then I was ready to attach my buttons. And I found these adorable little heart-shaped buttons that are gold and cream that I thought were just perfect for this project. So I'm really excited that I found them and really glad that I decided to use them on this project. So I went ahead and marked all of the position for the buttons and went ahead and sewed those on using a needle and thread. And then once my buttons were attached, I could go ahead and fold under my hem and stitch that down. I decided just to fold my hem under a quarter of an inch twice. So it's a narrow hem and just stitch that down with a straight stitch. And this shirt was done. So here is a look at how the shirt turned out. I'm really happy with the final product and I'm excited to have this in my wardrobe and incorporate it into some different outfits.
All right, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed it seeing how this shirt came together. I am really pleased with the final result, and I'm excited to style this over the next few weeks. I think it's going to be the perfect piece for the between the seasons time. And I also think it would look really cute layered with a sweater. So I'll play around with that a little bit. But thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. If you are new to my channel and this is the first video that you have found, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe to stay tuned for my future sewing projects if you're interested. And you can do that by clicking the red button down below. And if you'd like to keep up with me outside of YouTube, TikTok and Instagram are the best places to do that. So I will have both of those linked down below. But thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out here today. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.